India is the largest producer, consumer and exporter of spices in the world, contributing to about 48% of the world's requirement of spices. With the growing local and global demand for spices, there are several issues to be addressed regarding food sustainability, traceability and safety standards. While food safety concerns can be managed through modern processing technology, contaminants, pesticide residues and toxins remain important issues. This is because the spice crops are highly susceptible to pests and pathogens such as bacteria, fungus and viruses. When these are consumed without further processing or in ready-to-eat products, they could heavily affect the food safety. Farmers often use chemical control methods like pesticides which seem like a faster, effective and economical solution. This, however, poses enormous health hazards to the farmers as well as consumers through the contaminants, pesticide residues and toxins. In this video, we will learn how to effectively control pests in spice production using Integrated Pest Management. Integrated Pest Management or IPM is an ecosystem-based strategy that focuses on long-term prevention of pests and their control through a combination of techniques such as biological, mechanical and cultural practices before resorting to need-based chemical control. A well-defined IPM program is based on the three pillars of prevention, monitoring and control which enables drastic reduction of the use of pesticides and minimizes the toxicity and exposure to such chemicals. Prevention involves adopting practices that can control the pest population. Monitoring involves regular scouting of the field and the crop to identify pest infestation before they cause economic damage. Control involves decisions on the most suitable strategy to be adopted based on what is economical, physically feasible, effective and least toxic. Let us understand the various control methods under IPM. Cultural control methods relate to the environment you prepare and maintain for the spices that keep the crop healthy, prevent stress and suppress pests. Here are some important practices to be followed under cultural control methods. Choose tolerant seed varieties and areas that are pest and disease tolerant or resistant and that adapt to the environment you are in. Avoid endemic areas for pest and disease. Use pro trays for nurseries. This not only avoids competition between seedlings but also avoids incidence of pests and diseases. Deep plough the soil to destroy any pests from previous seasons. Practice timely sowing, crop rotation and green manuring. Sow on raised beds to avoid stagnation of water. Manage weeds in time to prevent them from becoming secondary hosts to pests. Plant trap crops that attract pests, for instance, plant castor or marigold around chili or coriander. Select fields away from other crops like cotton that attract many pests or disease. Maintain border crops to form a screen around the main crop. Handle the produce carefully during harvest and post-harvest operations to avoid pests. Biological methods use predators that feed on pests. Spiders and ladybird beetles, for instance, help to control shoot borers and rhizome flies on turmeric crop. To attract such predators, make a conducive environment by growing a host plant and hedgerows of flowering plants which provide nectar and pollen for these beneficial insects. Mechanical control involves directly destroying the pests or making the environment unsuitable. Solarization during land preparation is an effective method of killing pests in the soil. Use manual methods such as hand picking or destroying the infested plant. Others include use of traps like pheromone traps, light traps and sticky traps. Bird perches should be kept in fields to attract birds which eat the pests. Chemical control should be the last resort after exhausting all other methods. 
use selective pesticides for specific plants where the pest population is beyond the economic threshold level. Purchase chemicals only from authorized dealers and use only the recommended doses. Avoid unpermitted chemicals which may be effective but are highly toxic. Maintain proper records of chemicals used including name, date of application and target pests. Use and maintain proper equipment such as sprayers, nozzles and so on. Use personal protective equipment while spraying. Maintain a safe harvest interval or SHI of 10 to 30 days before harvesting to allow the chemicals to dissipate throughout the plant. After you have used the pesticide containers, dispose them correctly and do not leave them in the field. Other practices to be followed include avoiding flood irrigation as it uses excess water and also increases the risk of spreading disease in the field. Drip irrigation is the most efficient and effective method which provides water to the plant directly. Soil testing and pH correction will improve nutrient intake in plants. Use of need-based NPK fertilizer and micronutrients as per scientific recommendation will avoid growth spurt, weakening the plant and making it more susceptible to pest attack. IPM is an effective method of growing spices in an environmentally friendly way. When you follow these practices well, you will achieve a high yield of healthy products that will lead to high returns. New Strategies of Integrated Pest Management Intensive agricultural practices relying heavily on chemical pesticides are a major cause of widespread ecological imbalances resulting in serious problems of insecticide resistance, pest resurgence and pesticide residues in crops and the environment. The Economic Threshold Level or ETL was the basis for several decades but in modern IPM emphasis is given to ASA where farmers make decisions based on a larger range of field observations. ASA is an approach which can be gainfully employed by extension functionaries and farmers to analyze field situations with regard to pests, defenders, soil conditions, plant health, the influence of climatic factors and the farmer's past experiences. Such critical analysis of the field situations will help in taking appropriate decisions on management practices.